um, Mark Lockers, Lockwood, who is, looks after the balloons, is with us in the commentary box and has just said that during the tea break, at around about 2.50 this afternoon after the flying bulls, we're going to be in for an absolute treat. Some of the very special shaped balloons are going to be inflated, including Rupert the Bear. So uh, anyone in the audience who is a Rupert fan, please do head over to the Cameron Arena to have a look at some of those balloons being inflated. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Hooten flying the Jet Provost Mark III. Over 741 provosts of all the different marks have been produced and uh, they were developed by hunting Percival from the Percival Provost, another, uh, another training aircraft. Very, very small, the original ones, but were characterised by an unbelievably tall undercarriage. T-Mark III it was built at Luton and delivered to the Royal Air Force in the summer of 1961, posted to the RAF College Cranwell and given the identity of number 32, remained in service until mid-1966 when it was ferried to RAF Shawbury and put into long-term storage with 27 maintenance units. Later moved to uh, RAF Kemble for a further period of storage, this time with five maintenance unit and has stayed there for the next three years. The T3 was a much improved version of the earlier Provosts. It had a strengthened undercarriage, more powerful engine, ejection seats and other airframe refinements. Eventually 201 of these uh, Mark III's were produced. This aircraft was uh, converted to T3A status and was one of the last of them to be upgraded. It was delivered to RAF Linton on Ouse and immediately went into service with number one flying training school. Remained in service at the FL for the next 17 years until finally retired in 1993. Uh, was withdrawn from service and acquired by the Newcastle Jet Provost Company, a consortium made up of several private pilots and uh, it's had a lot of different upgrades uh, to its radio gear etc over the years and it is still in the same ownership as one of the lowest powered Jet Provost in existence. So uh, that is going to ensure that we'll be seeing this aircraft flying for many, many years to come. Obviously there were further modification and refinements of the type with increased power and uh, larger cockpit, refined aerodynamics as well. They produced the T5, the T5A, and there were other export versions that were uh, sent to Ceylon, Sudan, Kuwait, Iraq and uh, also Venezuela. Whilst you're talking about engineering, just want to put a shout out there for all the aircraft engineers and the hours and hours spent in sometimes cold hangars, making sure these beautiful aircraft are kept in pristine condition. This is one of the, uh, the earlier provosts, of course, uh, 
Uh, a lot of those aircraft uh, served with the RAF College at Cranwell, the later models, and a number of them, quite a few in fact, were actually sold uh, overseas, particularly to Australia. Look at that beautiful aircraft. This is uh, very much reminiscent of the earlier models with that rather snub nose. Master, aka the Blunty in New Zealand. Served over there with uh, number 75 squadron. And of course also uh, was a great export for uh, uh, the British aircraft industry. So last opportunity for some photographs as the aircraft makes one of its final display passes. given the uh, buzz number 32. Remained in service until mid-1966, but it was ferried to our RAF Shawbury and put into long-term storage. It was later moved to RAF Campbell, and after a further period of storage, it remained for three years. February 1976 was ferried to Wharton Airfield in Lancashire for conversion to T3A status and was one of the last aircraft to be upgraded. Test flown in April 76 
and just three days later the aircraft was delivered to RAF Linton on Ouse and immediately went into service with number one flying training school.
very fast and do all manner of things, but uh, when you go on to the jet, there are a lot of things that you have to learn. And a lot of air forces are still using the transition from smaller piston engine aircraft into the first generation jets. Um, a lot jumped through that hoop as well for aircraft such as the PC-9 or the Takata or the PC-21.